Hello everyone, I'm Sumit Chander and I would be today telling you what kind of books are there in a lawyer's library. It's a very interesting thing to know what kind of books are there and not only what kind of books are there, how to actually do research from them. I hope this video helps you in this. So now let us begin with the most basic book which all of you would be already aware of is called a Bear Act. Why is it called a Bear Act? It's called a Bear Act because it's in its barest form, providing these sections as it was passed by the legislature, by the Parliament of India. So now let us see for an example, while we are going through the books, about a particular section. Let's try and do this entire book research together in this video. And let's focus on section 10 of the Code of Civil Procedure. Now I have Gurdeep advocate here to help us and I would request Gurdeep to please give us the bear act of the Code of Civil Procedure to take out section 10 in that. Thank you Gurdeep. So Gurdeep as you can see has given us the Code of Civil Procedure and he has also flagged the section 10 of the CPC. Now let us read out what section 10 says. So we have here is section 10 which says stay of suit. It says, no court shall proceed with the trial of any suit in which the matter in issue is also directly and substantially in issue in a previously instituted suit between the same parties or between parties under whom they or any of them claim litigating under the same title, which such suit is pending in the same or any other court in India having jurisdiction to grant the relief claimed or in any court beyond the limits of India established by continued by the central government and having jurisdiction or before the Supreme Court. Explanation, the pendency of a suit in a foreign court does not preclude the courts in India from trying a suit founded on the same cause of action. So basically section 10 of the Code of Civil Procedure says that if there are two suits pending in two different courts with the same cause of action the suit which has been instituted later should be stayed. But now with this aspect in mind, we need to get into more details of it to understand what section 10 is all about. So we will go to an, some author who will, who must have propounded and detailed this provision of law along with other provisions of law. and keeping the various judgments of the Supreme Court and High Courts in mind has compiled uh, in a book and that book is called a commentary. So now, so now I would request Gurdeep to give me the commentary on the Code of Civil Procedure. Gurdeep, can you please? Thank you. So like you can see, Gurdeep has given me a commentary on the Code of Civil Procedure written by the authors Sudipto Sarkar and VP Manoha. He has also flagged the relevant portions, which is the provision of section 10. So let us take out section 10 in this commentary to understand what the author has done extra as compared to the Bear Act. So the author reproduces the section, which says section 10, stay of the suit, and goes further, including the explanation which was given in the Bear Act. The addition what the author has done is to write the synopsis of it. He has categorized each ingredient of the section as synopsis. In this case, he has made 14 ingredients and then expounded upon each synopsis in detail. So now coming to a, rel a related portion with respect to section 10 of the Code of Civil Procedure. Let me read this out to you. It says that main question in the second suit whether wrongful repudiation by the plaintiff was there in the first suit and Supreme Court said or the High Court said that stay is not granted. This was held in the case of Shidap Prasad versus Semiconductors Limited, AIR 1976, Calcutta 358. So now let us now to understand what this is. This is called a citation. Most of you would already be aware of these citations. Fortunately for you, if you put this citation in your any one of your websites related to law or your law softwares, you are immediately able to come to this judgment. But during our times, we would go to a library, we would take out the journals of AIR. In that journal, we would see the journals related to the year 1976 
Once we have found the 1976 EIR, then we would look for the judgments compiled by the Com Calcutta High Court and thereafter we go to page 358 of that judgment. So now let us go and see the compilation in the journals. Let me introduce you to the journals now. So now you had seen in the commentary, the author had made a statement which was part of a judgment passed by the Calcutta High Court and it had mentioned the citation which was AIR 1976. Now this is a compilation of all the AIRs, at least part of it I would say. And from this we will take out the AIR for the year 1976, more particularly in that year all the judgments passed by the Calcutta High Court. Now I will request advocate Arzu Khattar to give me a copy of the relevant journal. Thank you Arzu. So as you can see Arzu has given me AIR 1976 and of Calcutta High Court. Now if you would remember there was also a page number mentioned. Arzu what was that page number? 358. So uh, 358 number page has already been flagged by Arzu here. Now if you can see it talks about the title of the case which is Shiva Prasad Agarwal versus Semiconductors Private Limited is the same title which was mentioned in the book. It is also related to section 10 and the entire judgment is there. But if it is the same judgment passed by the Calcutta High Court then why different journals are there? What is the difference in each journal? The difference my friends is of the head notes. Now if you see in this head notes AIR talks about section 10 matters in issue directly and substantially not the same in both the suits and therefore some instances given and then the relevant portion of the judgment. Like this AIR has in short in a head note given the summary of the entire judgment. What AIR also does is that it combines all the head notes in something called the AIR manual. Now AIR manual is a digest of all the provisions of law of the central government acts and only the head notes of it with respect to each section has been mentioned in that manual. Let us now go to the manual. Like we said all the head notes of the AIR are compiled by the journal authors into a something called AIR manual. Now AIR manual is a compilation like I said of all the head notes and AIR has been coming up over the number of years citing all the sections of all the central government acts and in details of each writing the head notes below each provision of law. Now if you can see the green ones here are the AIR manual which initially started they completed from all the acts starting from A to Z. These were again modified later with the latest judgments coming up. The other AIR manuals on the top rack you can see the brown color. So now let us take out one of these journals, one of these manuals which has the content of the section 10 of the code of civil procedure. Now I will request advocate Gurdeep to take out this AIR manual which talks about section 10 of the code of civil procedure. Gurdeep has also flagged the AIR manual which is series part 3. It talks about all the acts from central sales tax which is alphabet C to the civil procedure code 1908 section 103. So obviously section 10 will be somewhere in between this. So now you can see section 10 of the code of civil procedure and like you had seen in the commentary synopsis are given there are 17 synopsis to section 10 where all the ingredients have been bifurcated and then as different from the commentary 
each synopsis below it is the head notes of the journals and i had read one to you so now if i am doing a research through the air manual i will take out section 10 i'll read the provision and then i will read the relevant part of the provision where it may suit my facts of the case in this case i will read the provisions of stay in this section are mandatory and this has been detailed in the air journal 1962 supreme court at page 527 the relevant at page 536 so now let's go back to the journals which you had seen but in this time we are now focusing on the air of 1962 and supreme court like you all noticed in the air manual the relevant provision of section 10 we came across a judgment which we thought fits our case and in that you noticed the citation which was of air of the supreme court in the year 1962 now i will request advocate arzu khatter to please show me and give me the air of 1962 Thank you Arzu. So Arzu has given us AIR 1962 Supreme Court. She has marked the relevant pages. What was the page number Arzu? 527 with the relevant page 536. Okay. So 530 527. So now you can see it is 527 Yeah, nineteen sixty-two, Supreme Court, five to seven, and in this, the relevant portion, as Arzu has mentioned, was at page five three six, and let's see if it talks about the same uh, words which was used there. Very well, it says the provisions of that section are clear, definite, and mandatory. A court which is a subsequent in which a subsequent suit suit. has been filed is prohibited from proceeding with the trial of that suit in certain specified circumstances so yes this helps our case we take this judgment we take a copy of this judgment and bring it before the court so like you were able to get to this judgment through the commentary through the air manual and similar to air manual there are also digests by various other journals say for example the rcr or the recent civil reports can you show us some recent civil report digests all the citations in this would be with respect to the rcr and rcr has its own journals and the head notes of those journals of the rcr are mentioned in this digest similarly there is a digest on the code of civil procedure in two volumes this would being a general digest and not by a journal would have the citations with various other journals not exclusive to rcr as in the rcr digest or air manual for the air journal so friends with this now that if you understood the kind of books there and i hope it is now clear as to if you are to do a research how you can do it in a law library without using any software or any website I would personally strongly recommend that with time and if you have the time to do a research in a particular subject you must do research through books because when you do that unconsciously what you are able to do is to get thorough with various other aspects because before you reach to what you need for your facts of the case you will go through all the other head notes and in that the entire concept broadly would get very clear into your mind with respect to that provision of law as in this case was section 10 of the code of civil procedure thank you so much